It all started in 1905, the Annus Mirabilis. Imperial Japan shattered the myth of European military superiority by defeating Russia. Around the same time, in another part of the world, a race called Bengali was fuming against the oppressive British regime that had decided to bifurcate their motherland into two. Although both the races toiled for their right to self-determination, collaboration was still a long way to go. Fast forward to the 1910s. While the Japanese were fast emerging as an important imperial force in the Pacific and decided to side with the Allied powers in the First World War, the Bengalis decided to collaborate with the Germans, a legendary episode that history would commemorate by the name of Hindu-German Conspiracy. The leaders of the Hindu-German Conspiracy, the Bengali duo of Rash Bihari Bose and Jatindranath Mukhopadhyay, Bhagajatin in short had two different responsibilities assigned. While Bhagajatin's gang was busy negotiating with the German crown for the timely delivery of the arms consignment, Rash Bihari played a pivotal role in establishing necessary military networks countrywide and instigating mutiny in the native populace of the Indian army. But as history has proven repeatedly, the Indians' masses never had any dearth of backstabbers. In spite of all the secrecy, meticulous planning and hard work, the word of Hindu-German plot was leaked, and the years of hard work were bound to end up in fiasco. While Bhagajatin's fate ended in a doomed encounter, Rash Bihari Bose, following the failed attempt on Lord Hardinge's life in 1912, had several occasions with the aggressive imperial police closing in on him. A remarkable disguise as he was, Rash Bihari escaped from the police cordons each time. As luck favoured him exceptionally, Rash Bihari managed to escape to Japan under the alias of P.N. Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore's relative. Although lucky enough to land safely in Japan in the year 1915, Rash Bihari's expatriate life was beset with mortal uncertainties. But with Britain exercising diplomatic pressure on Japan for Bose's extradition on one hand, and lethal spies chasing him on the other, Rash Bihari led a hectic life of incessant flight in his initial days in Japan. But as luck would have it, even in this alien land, Rash Bihari Bose eventually had many people favouring his revolutionary views. Soon Rash Bihari was fortunate enough to have the ultra-nationalist Black Dragon Society in his favour and was sheltered by the aristocratic Soma family, who owned the popular Nakamuraya Bakery and was loyal to the Black Dragon Society. The Black Dragon Society, also known as Kokoryukai, was a prominent paramilitary, ultra-nationalist group in Japan. Its membership included cabinet ministers and high-ranking military officers, as well as professional intelligence operatives, including the Japanese Prime Minister, Tsuyoshi Inukai. Sun Yat-sen, the legendary Chinese revolutionary and later the premier of nationalist China recognized the immense possibilities Rash Bihari was endowed with and arranged for his meeting with Mitsuru Toyama, the legendary Japanese nationalist leader and the founding chief of the Black Dragon Society. Toyama was immensely impressed by Rash Bihari's revolutionary acumen and was firmly convinced that Rash Bihari would be a highly valuable asset for his vision of Pan-Asianism. Unwilling to miss this rare opportunity of securing ties with the Indian cause of independence, so Toyama asked the Soma family to marry their daughter Toshiko to Rash Bihari and adopt him as their son so that Rash Bihari's citizenship could be easily secured and all attempts by British authorities for Rash Bihari's extradition could be averted. Also, an angry Japan, betrayed by the victorious Allied forces in the Treaty of Versailles, had already resolved to terminate their lenient agreements with the British government concerning extradition. Besides, popularizing the Indian-style Nakamuraya chicken curry, Rash Bihari Bose earned the Japanese epithet of Tenrai or Heavenly Being. The Bose couple was blessed with a boy Masahide and a girl child Tetsuko. However, Toshiko did not live long and passed away after only eight years of their marriage, in 1924. In 1943, the Japanese government honored Bose with the highest title available to a foreigner, the Order of the Rising Sun, second class. Besides being fiercely committed to the revolutionary cause of India's independence, Rash Bihari had no delusions regarding the Hindu roots of Indian nationalism. Almost immediately after Via Savarkar's release from his decades-long detention in 1937, Rash Bihari Bose wasted no time establishing contacts with him and other contemporary guardians of the vastly spread revolutionary networks in India. The revolutionary duo frequently exchanged letters, 
and by summer 1938, Rash Bihari expressed his desire of establishing an overseas branch of Hindu Mahasabha in Japan. Rash Bihari Bose praised Savarka in a radio talk, saying, In saluting you, I have the joy of doing my duty towards one of my elderly comrades in arms. In saluting you, I am saluting the symbol of sacrifice itself. Rash Bihari Bose wrote a long article on Savarkar in March-April 1939 issues of Japanese magazine Daya Jiyashugi Greater Asianism with the title Savarkar, a rising leader of New India his career personality. The advent of Nataji Subhash Bose in the premises of Imperial Japan heralded a new chapter in the history of Calcutta-Tokyo Axis. Already renowned as an uncompromising champion of Indian liberation, Nataji Subhash Bose was cordially anointed as the able successor of Rash Bihari Bose and the inheritor of his demoralized Indian Independence League. In the ensuing days of Imperial Japan's fiercest offensives in the Indian subcontinent, the political alliance would be further strengthened with the martyr's blood. Although the colonial mouthpieces up in opposition of Azad Hind's mission dubbed it as a mere lapdog of fascist Japan, Nataji's radio speeches made it clear beyond ambiguity that it was only an alliance of empathy and convenience, and that no power on earth could dominate Indians again. But destiny planned otherwise, and soon the Allied forces started having the upper hand in the Pacific. For a modern yet chivalrous Japan, capitulation to the Western powers was never an option. If defeat is inevitable, it would be a bed of thorns for the Americans. The barbarity of Iowa Jima and the numerous kamikazes proved how far Imperial Japan could go to bleed her enemy. Rash Bihari's son Lieutenant Masahide, also known as Bharat Chandra, was no exception and readily laid down his life in Japan's defense at a young age of 25. On the 6th and 9th August, 1945, the United States devastated Japan with their newly developed nuclear arsenal. In 1946, the Tokyo Tribunal constituted by the Allied forces unambiguously sentenced the entire gang of convicts to death, except one. Going against the coterie of the Allied mouthpieces, Justice Radabinod Pal, a veteran legal expert and son of the Bengali soil pointed out the failure of the tribunal to provide anything other than the opportunity for the victors to retaliate. A grateful Japan did not forget to recognize Radabinod's service to the Japanese cause. Justice Radha Binod Pal was conferred with the first class of the Order of the Sacred Treasure by the Japanese Emperor and was honored as a friend of Japan. Justice Radha Binod Pal's lone dissent against the Tokyo Tribunal's arbitrary dictations was a remarkable instance of pan-Asian solidarity shown by an erudite Indian. Almost a century has elapsed since. A vastly changed world order has mitigated the proximity of Tokyo and Calcutta that transcended all barriers of geopolitical positions. However, the common struggle of the two races to re-emerge and stand upright against Western imperialism and the revival of nationalism unites the Bengalis and the Japanese forever. Asia's fight against the West's unfair dominance and ubiquity is far from over and for victory, the Tokyo-Calcutta axis must rise again.